Welcome back to the <laughs> second I speak. I was like, the whole time I was just like, I've been sat, you're just kind of going, hmm, okay. Just, okay, let's get ready to record. Just sit here, relax, in the zoom. I speak, the bird joins. Well, anyways, welcome back to Let's Play Shadow Wars Show You. It's been a while, and uh, I was honestly like kind of wondering if I was even going to record today. Because I've got nothing recorded in advance to upload today either for this, you know. Just like you're falling behind now. It's like, for the most part, this LP has been like, parts already recorded in advance. But now it's kind of falling behind a bit. I recently got back to recording the Final Fantasy X. I'm up to 19 parts on that now. And, uh, what else? Well, today I've pretty much spent, well... Definitely had a guitar life and stuff like that as well. But aside from all stuff like that, I've been more or less stuck on TV Tropes' site all freaking day. It's like... It's just... If you've ever you been on that site before, you just like... You click on something, say like... Say Cardboard Shoujo. You just like click on the page for Cardboard Shoujo. Because I'm... Pr I haven't seen the Cardboard Shoujo page for it, but I'm pretty damn sure it has it. Because yeah, it has freaking pages for anything and then you'll like have examples of tropes like right at the bottom and then you'll just be clicking on them open them up in separate windows because you're like oh let's see some more examples of that one and this one and that one and this one and that one and you just go on and on and they have such amusing names like bald of evil or I'm trying to think off the top of my head i've gone for quite a number of them today uh Oh yeah, one of them that kind of seems fitting with it for oh, how long I was stuck on that website. Uh, what was that trope called again? Ah, uh, oh, crap, I can't remember how worded it has, but it had something to do with, like, I think it was ending fatigue or something like that. Where, like, you know, an ending is so drawn out, so dragged out that you just, like, expect, like, the... That scene from Body Python to just come up and just be like, get on with it or something. I'm surprised I didn't see that example. You slacking TV tropes? What the hell? I would have thought that would have been like the quote at the top or something now that I think about it. Also, before we actually begin, uh, okay, there was a lot of rambling, oh, but one more bit of rambling. You know, seeing these, I'm just like thinking back to the Project Diva F kind of Hatsunemiku thing and like. I'm still thinking of, like, making extra clips for a Series 2 kind of thing. Not like an LP, but a Series 2. If you pay attention to my main channel, you'll have seen the uh, series of clips I've uploaded. Where I just put them into kind of episode kind of thing. Of the ones that I'd made for the LP itself, but decided to put them in separate parts. But essentially, I want to make a Series 2, potentially. And, like, include references to other games that I've been played since and previous and all that. I just thought, for this, she could totally be presented by, uh, crap, I forget her name, Tetu Kasane, or whatever her name is pronounced as. The one with the, well, she has drill hair as well, doesn't she? So that'd be fitting. But anyways, enough rambling. I am, like, doing the whole, well, it's kind of... Uh, beginning fatigue, I suppose, if that's even such a trope. I don't know, just get on with it. Let's get on with the plot. Well, Shizune looks like she means business anyway. It's like, God damn it! why do you always ramble? It's always at the start of a part. I mean, you ramble throughout the rest of the part, but the start is always the most rambling of them all. Misha just looks like she's about to start laughing at any minute. Up on the roof again, Hee-chan! You know that's dangerous, don't you? That's right. The school cannot be held responsible for any injury that comes from being up there, you know. Furthermore, we should we could report you for breaking the rules. Misha leans in and whispers completely. But we won't, Hee-chan. You three are too cute together. She screams up again, laughing at my sudden blush. Is it just me, or is any time she, like, does this pose when laughing, kind of reminds me of Bleach? Like, earlier episodes with that weird, non-convenient 
whatever his name was, so I can't remember. Genji, whatever. They just did this bizarre laugh where they're like, Wah -ha -ha -ha! So I it was just really silly. It just looks and reminds me of that, essentially. And she even does it! Wahahaha! I am Mr. Squash! Sister! <laughs> well, there's a fort! No, that'd be stupid for a character. <laughs> Just the whole Mr. Squash character is already pretty stupid in itself. You're too easy to tease, he chan Hey, come on. I'm still new here, sort of. Isn't it mean to pick on a newcomer like this? Nope. It's to help you get, uh, get related to your new surroundings. Well, do you have to be so overzealous about it? Yep. Ah, that aside, he chan we are looking for you. We were looking for you this morning, but you weren't in your room. Of course I wasn't. I was out for my morning exercise while here in class, bright and early. Unlike you. Shizune looks peeved and a bit litter. So does Misha, who she tries to at any rate. Well, she tries to. That was because of student council business. You should be grateful that we work so hard for you. Oh, I am, I am. So, what did you need me for? Not another attempt to rip me in to do their dirty work, I hope. We had to give you something, but since you went around, we dropped it off in your room. Something like what? Oh, you'll find I out when you get back, he chan <laughs> Really is like Mr. Squash with that. <laughs> Meter entering the room and to uh, I mean ends our conversation we all head to our seats. Suddenly after I've settled down at my desk and the teacher started talking about something or other that something odd strikes me. What did Rin mean you two seem to was Emmy staring at something too? For a brief moment I considered the possibility that Emmy was staring at me the way I was staring at her. Of course, that's ridiculous, couldn't happen, not in a visual novel, no. Still, I can't deny that I wouldn't mind if it were true, but it's best not to think of that, no need to get my hopes up. You know what would be a big twist in a visual novel, is if they, like, did the whole shonen kind of thing, you know, where they kind of tease relationships, but nothing comes of it, although, I'm kind of thinking of Naruto in this case, but technically that's, no, spoilers for, no, no. forget that, <laughs> but, you know, like, when, like, a uh, series just, like, they tease a relationship, and nothing comes of it. Nothing at all. And then you're just like, what was even the point in freaking bringing up the whole relationship thing if it's not going to happen? Imagine a visual novel where there's, like, multiple kind of candidates for, like, who's it, who's the plan he's going to get with? And he gets with none of them, no matter what choice you make. Gets friend-zoned every time. That would be the most depressing visual novel ever. Come to think of it, when did I start having hopes like that anyway? I shake my head in an attempt to clean it, I mean clear it, and focus on the lesson. After class, I make my way to my room and her really... I'll done the homework today. You know, I'm thinking, should I edit out that bit where I mentioned the Naruto? Because it didn't really make any real spoiler there. It was quite ambiguous. Nah, I'll just leave it in. <laughs> that was perfectly timed, just like, now nah, just leave it in. Bang! Before I can open my door, however, I am suddenly intercepted by Kenji, who has just exploded out of his own room in a flurry of papers. Hey, we need to talk. These rooftop shenanigans of yours, man. They have got to stop. What? You're running around on the rooftop with a limbless wonders. They're women, man. You're gonna get killed running around like that. Hey, don't fall. Kenji sighs and adjusts his glasses before what could be understood as an attempt at explaining himself patiently. Look, my friends, so I'm telling you this for your own good. But if we're going to... Wait, what? But if I were going to kill someone, I'd do it by throwing them up the roof and making me look like an accident. And I, if I thought of it, you could be sure they thought of it, too. They're crafty, almost as crafty as I am. I see. Good. I'm glad we had this chat. Loan me 500 yen. I'm sorry. I need to get a drink, man. I've been inside all day and the tap water's been compromised, as I'm sure you know. So I need to stock up on some can, got it? But to do that, I need 500 yen. And since I've just saved your life with my timely advice, you can at least spare me 500 yen. 
No, if it'll make him go away, 500 yen is a bargain. I hand the money over to Kenji, who nods and thanks and dashes off down the hallway, but not before he locks his door. What an exhausting person. I'd better go in case he changes his mind. I feel like part of his dialogue was foreshadowing in a way. Hmm. Hmm? As I close the door, my heel taps against something lying on the floor. You know, I find that weird. I was just, like, thinking there, just like going, hmm, about what I'd said, and then the next bit of dialogue was the same thing, so it went, hmm, hmm. As I close... Yeah, I read that. It's a brightly colored rectangle of paper. Ah, this must be the something Misha mentioned before. Probably a student can't leaflet she slid under the door. However, when I pick it up, I find that I couldn't have been more wrong. Someone actually wrote me an old-fashioned... Oh, I, I remember this. Handwritten paper letter. We're both doing something like that in this day and age, anyway. Yet, as unlikely as the prospect of receiving one sounds, this is definitely a letter I have in my hands. I was planning on finishing my homework, getting some dinner, and going to bed in order to be ready for tomorrow's morning run. However, the letter has naturally caught my interest, I sit at my desk and examine it properly. It's the first piece of mail I've received here at Yamaku, so it feels special even if it wasn't something as rare as a handwritten letter. What causes me more derision is the name of the sender written neatly on the back of the envelope. Iwanako. I have no idea why she would write to me, I haven't been in contact with anyone from my old school since I transferred. And Iwanako is the last person I'd expect to want to write me a letter. Last time I saw Iwanako was terribly awkward and embarrassing me, so. She came to my hospital room, peeled me an apple out of courtesy, and we practically sat in silence for half an hour. She said goodbye and didn't look me in the eye when she closed the door. It might have been a natural end to a series of visits that were probably pretty painful for both of us. Every time she visits me in the hospital, I wanted to talk to her, but something stopped me every time. Every time that I didn't speak made the next time even harder. She looked so guilty that I didn't want to say anything that might upset her, and I never could figure out the right words to say. I think Iwanaka blamed herself for my heart attack. That's ridiculous, of course, but knowing it and believing it are two very different things. I told her that it wasn't her fault. She nodded, and I really think she understood that if it... If it hadn't been that, the sooner or later something else would have made my heart give back. Yet she looked so hopelessly sad every time she opened that door and entered my room. So I never managed to say the things I wanted to say. In the end, that might have hurt her even more. Carefully, I opened the envelope and drew out the folded letter from within. Dear Asao, how are you? I hope you are well and happy at your new school. Everyone here misses you. Almost all of our second year class got put together in 3 1 for the final year. So we're pretty much pretty comfortable right from the beginning of the year. I'm sure you would have been assigned to this class as well. The mood among the third years seems to be very anxious about the final exams, even though they are so far away. The teachers are badgering us about it all the time. Even old Mr. Tachibana, who is, by the way, our old homeroom teacher this year, would you believe it? I was sure that he'd retire after our second year, but here he is nagging everyone about studying for exams. I think things like that are the main reason why the mood among the third years is so nervous. I must admit that I'm somehow losing confidence in myself as well, even though I've already fared reasonably well in exams. So weird to think that we're already seniors, isn't it? Time has really fl uh, flown past. I wonder where it went. The new first year seems so young and somehow really innocent. I keep wondering if I was like them in my first year. I've been feeling nostalgic like this for the whole first semester. There are other things I want to say. I'm writing to you because I felt that there are things I should have said after the incident back in winter. I really regret that I wasn't able to say them in person and I have no excuse for it. Yeah, I think I've had quite enough of this. I crumble up the sheet of paper and toss it across the room. My aim is off, so the letter rolls under my nightstand instead of going into my wastebasket. It was an apology for abandoning me, except I don't know and I don't know that I really need it anymore at this point. The hospital seemed like a lifetime ago, and here and now I've got all the things on my mind. Emmy for starters. 
It wasn't great to be abandoned during my stay, but it's not something I'm worried about anymore. In fact, I hadn't even thought about the hospital in what feels like forever until this letter came in. It's almost annoying to have received it. I've got exams to study for myself. I have no time for the bass. Now about that homework. Bloody hell, man. Well done, so <laughs> It's just like, a lot of people, you know, will dwell on the past a lot, you know, and so it's just like, you know what, fuck it, I've got shit to do. Focus is on the now. How the f- <laughs> It's just like, it, well, I yeah. Well, he seems pretty gloomy and just like, uh, at the start, but he freaking got, uh, well, he didn't get over it fast. I mean, he was in the hospital for months as well. But it didn't really seem like it took him all that long to go from, you know, uh, what's, where, where am I going anymore? Everything's just gone to shit to, you know, oh, fuck it, yeah, I got stuff to do now. So what's the plan for today anyway? I'm waiting patiently in the hallway of the girls' dormitory just outside of Emmy and Rin's rooms. Emmy is apparently helping Rin with getting dressed. I suppose that makes perfect sense, as I've no idea how Rin would get dressed otherwise. Picnic! Picnic? That's why I said! Sounds pretty exciting. I know, right? You know, we just like, we sit on the grass, and it pisses down with rain, and... Wait. Rin chooses this moment to make an observation. The sky seems threatening today. Did I foreshadow something? <laughs> Actually, I noticed that too on my way over. Despite the sunshine of the early morning, the afternoon seems to have taken a turn for the gloomy. There's a heaviness to the air as well. It usually heralds a rainstorm. I wonder if I should have brought my umbrella. Honestly, I wouldn't know what would herald a rainstorm, because it's always bloody raining anyway. I mean, well, obviously when the sky goes d all dark, you know, and it's not, you know, night. Then it's just like, yeah, it's probably gonna rain. But it rains so freaking often that it's just really just like a matter of time. If it's not raining, it's just like, it'll rain any second now, any minute, whatever. She's got a point. Emmy, you sure that you still want to risk getting caught in the rain? I don't even know why I bold asking. Emmy pops out of Rin's room into the hallway looking shocked that I'd even suggest cancelling our plans. Of course! What the fret? What? What? The fret of rain supposed to stop me? I can't help but grin at her belligerent response. It's almost like she's daring the rain to come. A bad move. If all the nature were walking down the street, I think Emmy would probably start a fight with her. Bad idea. I mean, can you imagine if Mother Nature was, you know, an actual living sentient thing, and was actually nature itself? I don't even know how that would make sense. But, like, just picture it as, like, the planet being sentient, I suppose. Just, like, a giant arm just comes out of the ground, made of, like, bark or something, just, like, bitch slaps, and she goes flying, just like, don't fuck with nature. Just, like, then it comes back up, gives a finger, kind of, like, waves it to the side, goes back down. It's like, what? That's all you got? Just, like, well, I don't even know, man. I've got a bizarre sense of humor. Just like, when it comes to uh, thinking of like, the earth being sentient and people just be like, you know what, I'm screwing about nature and nature just like, giving them a bitch slap in some bizarre, surreal, abstract way. Like, I'd imagine if like, I don't know, I just got a bizarre sense of humor when it comes to stuff like that. Like, imagining if the earth was sentient, would we have to pay rent? Just be like, okay, 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 people, animals of the world, pay up your rent, you've been littering, you've been stealing all my stuff, now give me stuff, or I'm gonna fucking turn off gravity and send you bosses into space. Where fucking all the plants can have you, and Mars like, no, 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 we don't want any. And Venus is just like, bring it on, we've got all this kind of shit going on, they won't have a chance. Planet PMS is over here. Because seriously, 
I see like you read about Venus and Venus is just like the atmosphere on Venus is just like chaos. Then you look at Mars, it's like bland and plain, and then you think about the comparison, it's like men are from Mars, women from Venus. And you look at the two and you're just like so essentially does that mean men are plain and women are crazy? I suppose some people could see it as having some truth, but I'd say it's a mix of the two. Some women can be plain or crazy, or both. Plain crazy, and men could be the same, and then it could be interesting which would be... I don't know which planet would qualify there. I don't even know. What are we even talking about? Let's get back to the plot here. Or at least, uh, challenger to a race. What was the dialogue before that? Anyway, I've completely lost the plot. Well, yeah, the fight with Mother Nature. Wait, oh, so in that context, she challenged Mother Nature to a race. I don't think that'd go down well. <laughs> it's like, Emmy, you may be fast, but I don't think you could beat Mother Nature at a race. Because, well, it wouldn't even make sense. I'm not even going to continue with that rambling, because it would take forever for me to stop and get back to my plot. In fact, Emmy seems almost aggressively cheerful today. Rin wanders out into the hallway looking her usual self. Well then, are we all ready to go? I'm ready! Rin nods and says a single word. Basket. Beg pardon? A basket in Emmy's room. You should carry it. Emmy claps her hand to her mouth embarrassed. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot all about it! Nice save, Rin! Emmy darts into her room and emerges with what looks like a very stock picnic basket. As she hands it over to me, I note that it feels heavy enough to be one... Uh, uh, heavy enough to be one too. Good lord, how much food did she pack? More to the point, where'd she get the money for all this? So, where are we set the head out? Oh, we set the head out of it. Yep! Ren gives an all nod and we head out of the dormitory. I can't help but frown when I notice how grey the sky has gotten in the ten minutes I was inside. Oh, that's nothing, man. There is, well, it is grey, but it has a faint bluish kind of feel to it, maybe. I mean, grey, you haven't seen grey skies till you've come to the UK. Well, there are other countries, I imagine, that have grey sky a lot, but it's really just like bland. That's like typical British weather, just like grey skies. I mean, sure, in spring and summer you do get blue skies more often, but you still get rain. You get rain more than anything else. Still, Emmy does not seem concerned by such petty concerns as the color of the sky. She's positively skipping as we walk. Which reminds me, uh, where are we going? This brings Emmy up short and she shoots me an embarrassed look. You know, I hadn't really thought of that. What do you think is out? Well, there's a spot where we ate during the festival, but it might be nice to leave the campus for a while. However, I'm not sure if there's any good places to do that in town. Just as I'm about to open my mouth, we really unexpectedly interject with a suggestion. There's a park in town near the art shop. Great idea, Rin, I almost forgot all about that place. Crisis averted. You know, with this whole TV trope thing I was mentioning, sounds like a trope there, because like, they have, like, averted tropes and stuff. It's just random, and I just... I wonder how many tropes there actually are on that site, because there are got to be hundreds, if not thousands or more. Do you know how to get there, Rin? Rin shrugs. It's pretty likely. Good enough for me. I wouldn't for a knowing for sure, but what the hell. Lead on, Rin. The three of us quickly make our way off campus and take the road down into town. The basket's a bit heavy. I hope that the park is close by. We pass the art supply store, Rin showing her pace slightly as we go by. Well, slowing, not showing. Emmy notices Rin's change of pace and stops. You wanna go in, Rin? Rin shrugs. Nothing I need. Be sure? There's the slightest flutter of a smile on Rin's face, quickly replaced with her usual expression. Life's uncertain, but on this at least I am, Rachel. Nice of you to offer. 
Well, it's not like I'm the one carrying the basket. But I'll bet a sow wouldn't have minded anyway, right? Oh, of course not. This is hardly a heavy load. I have flex purposes. Emmy stipples a snort of laughter by pointing to the park at which we suddenly arrived. Oh, I remember this place. I ran uh, into here the one time, didn't I, Rin? Rin's eyebrows raised slightly. Maybe. I'm unwilling to save a certain one way or the other. Memory is a tricky thing, you know. Well, I'll be. We made it in one piece after all. The sun's still nowhere to be seen, but now Emily nor Rin seem to mind. We find a spot. We sit on the grass and I set the basket down gravely. No, actually. What button would do that, actually? It doesn't matter. But, you can't really tell if that she hasn't got, you know, like, legs there, because it's kind of hidden. But isn't that an adorable face? There's a surprising amount of food repaired. Maybe we were supposed to be joined by some of Emmy's teammates or something. I'm starving. Dig in. She attacks the food as if she'd had nothing to eat for years. <laughs> I'm just reaching for the food myself when I feel the first drop of rain land on the back of my hand. That's not a drop of rain, man. It just face down with rain. I've said it before. I've mentioned this time. Um, that happened to me before. I remember just literally walking down the street. I started to pick the rain. It's like, oh, it's picking the rain. It's like... Straight away. It's like... There's so much chaos. Uh-oh. Looks like the well's not going to cooperate with us after all. Oh, that glare! Emmy glares at the sky as if that alone will hold back the rain. I very nearly believe she can do it. It's one heck of a glare. It's like... With Dark Upper 2, with uh, Yume's glare, it's more of a kind of I am so disappointed and revolted by you kind of glare. Well, this one is, I'm gonna tear your fucking throat out, type of glare. Two very different glares, but glares nonetheless. It better cooperate. You hear me, Sky? You stop that rain and right this instant. And Sky doesn't seem inclined to listen to her, despite the commanding tone she's taken with it. Instead, the rain seems to increase. Serene wrinkles her nose in distaste at this turn of events. Regrettable. What do you mean? Rain shrugs. I could paint this if I uh, if I went out here. Shame to miss it, you know. She doesn't seem angry or annoyed about it, just a little disappointed. Emmy laughs in response to Rin's comment. Guess we should have stopped there at the art supply store after all, huh? The rain increased a little more offended that we haven't fled yet. Despite the warm temperatures we've been enjoying, the rain is rather cold. I wish I brought my umbrella. Hey, we should probably head inside to uh, keep dry. We're already pretty wet, Sal. Yeah, but we can dry off this way and maybe wait out the storm here. Yeah, don't want to catch a cold on you. Do. Emmy considers this for a moment, so I can tell that part of her wants to stay out in the rain just to spite the weather. Unfortunately for her, the weather hardly cares about what we do. You know, speaking of, you know, because this is unrelated, but it yeah, has something in common with Emmy, because you know how Emmy is passionate about running and all, right? Well, earlier today, I was out, out in the car, you know, don't drive anything, just out in the car, you know, just for a drive, and like, any time, it, it's just like people will jog, every time, you always see people jogging at some point, and it's always when it's raining it's like today it wasn't well it was raining but not all that bad it was mostly gale force winds going on and there were people still out jogging jogging with dogs attached to them as well it's just like determination man they probably had the same kind of uh, determination as emmy does it's just like nope ain't gonna stop me i suppose you're right uh, where could we go? 
I don't think an answer for her. I don't have an answer for her. The air is still pretty new to me. So I guess I'm slowly getting used to the school itself. The surrounding town remains a mystery. Well, I know it's the art supply store, and that's only because we just passed it. Fortunately, Emmy soon snaps her fingers to in prime. That's it, there's a tea shop nearby. You should have the tea and dry out, no problem. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. Great, you know what it is. I mean, oh, it's looking fairly confident. Sure do. I think. Well, it'll be an adventure either way, right? Adventure? Oh, well, I suppose we could use a little adventure. I think as long as we get out of the rain, I'll be happy. The picnic basket is a little lighter now, at least. Wait on. Rain and I follow Emmy as she waves through the streets with something approaching confidence. Now, uh, left here. There, the Shanghai! Emmy beams rapidly as she points to the tea shop. It seems fairly crowded inside, a symptom of the sudden rain, I'm sure. 